Hi, I'm Kevin Thomas, and welcome back to the At Home Film Festival. It's a new month out there, so you know what that means? Yes, it is the start of Oscar season. We have three months to go for this year, and we've already had nine months of movies that many could be Oscar-worthy, like these winners from last year. Many people are after this gold. I got mine. Anyway, most of the Oscar winners historically speaking, come in the last few months of the year because they're easier for the voters to remember. So most studios wait until now, mostly even more in November, December, to release the films that they want to be up for Oscars. This week, I'm going to take a look at seven movies that you could see at home that have Oscar buzz galore. And I'm talking mostly the major categories because there's so many great categories. But I, if I went into costumes and sound and sets and all that, I couldn't narrow it down to seven. So let's pick seven that either are being buzzed for picture or director or acting or writing. Most of my buzz comes from a website called Gold Derby where critics and the public combined give their predictions and then we see them ranked. A lot of the predictions early on are just from buzz because some of these movies have not been seen. So by the time we get the end of the year, they can completely have changed the list. But let's take a look at seven buzzworthy movies, okay? Let's go now! Our first movie, which is available on Spectrum for free or just a few dollars on so many different sites, had so much Oscar buzz when it came out in April and now it's dead. Even it's not on Gold Derby anymore. I wrote to them and asked, what the fuck? Really? Because this has Nicolas Cage and co-starring Nick Cage in a movie called The Bearable Weight of Massive Talent. He plays Nicolas Cage, I know it's not a stretch, who's kind of washed up. And if we think about it, Nicolas Cage often is kind of washed up because he kind of makes the same movie over and over and it makes a copy of the last movie. So each time it makes a little less money. So his character as Nicolas Cage agrees to go to this island to entertain this billionaire just to make some money. Oh, but it's so funny. It was buzzed Oscar Lee when it first came out. I just made up the term Oscar Lee. Um, he definitely should be up for best actor. He's even a great supporting actor. And no matter what, it should be up for best original screenplay because this is brilliant. It's the funniest thing ever. And after all, it does star. I'm Nick Fucker! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, oh my God, then we have Austin Butler as Elvis in Elvis. Oh my God, what a great performance. On HBO, by the way, you could watch it right now for free. This is from Baz Luhrmann, who always does grandiose movies that I love. And I really think Austin will be up for an Oscar for sure. That's a lock. And of course, a lot of technical ones like costumes and all of that. But one person that's really not high on the list right now, I'm surprised, is Tom Hanks as the Colonel, Elvis's agent. Tom gives a bravura performance, and he really becomes the character, and yet there's not a lot of buzz for him. But I'm not an Oscar voter, I'm just a watcher, so hopefully Tom could make it, but otherwise, Austin Butler better be up for Best Actor, and that's all I want to say about that. Then we have one of the biggest hits of all time, Top Gun Maverick. I usually don't talk about blockbuster films because they're so easy to find and watch. This one you could rent almost anywhere for a few dollars. But this Top Gun not only broke records at the box office, but it's getting tons of Oscar buzz. And that I just mean for Lady Gaga's song. It's being touted for best picture. Tom Cruise is bubbling under for Best Actor. It will probably get many technical ones, but this might be a surprise nominee in many other categories because it surprised many people at how much money it made and brought in a brand new audience of young fans that now probably are going to go watch all the other Tom Cruise movies, including the original Top Gun. This will blow you away if you haven't seen it. Now watch it through the Oscars eyes. Perhaps the movie with the most Oscar credibility or consideration is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. It 
is a small film that's made a hundred million dollars. It's got so much great praise from critics and public alike. This will probably be the first nomination for Michelle Yeoh, which would be great. And her co-stars Stephanie Hsu and Kiwi Kwan are also likely to get nominated. This movie Actually, I didn't love it personally. I didn't even hate it. I just think about it a lot because it was so weird. Michelle plays an ordinary small business owner who gets sort of mixed up in a metaverse where she goes into time or space into different areas and she becomes a superhero. She becomes a chef. She becomes so many things. Or is it just in her mind? The only thing that the Oscars haven't really been talking about as much, even though she's creeping up the list a little bit, is Jamie Lee Curtis, who should also be nominated. Jamie gives the performance of her life in this movie. It is so interesting. And Jamie adds a dimension. They all are wonderful. This movie needs acting nominations across the boards. And I don't think they're going to forget many of them, but Jamie Lee Curtis may have to fight to get to the finals. So... If she's gonna fight, this is the movie to do it in. Wow. You could rent it everywhere for a few dollars. Our final three is kind of a smorgasbord of possible, probable best screenplay nominees. Let's start off with the Emma Thompson movie. Good luck to you, Leo Grand. She plays a woman who's deciding she's never had an orgasm, so she hires a man to help her achieve that. Daryl McCormick is also great in this movie with her. And it could be a play because it's really just the two of them most of the time. But it's funny, it's witty, it's charming, it's heartbreaking, it's full of so many things, and it's available on Hulu. It definitely is a leading contender for best screenplay, but we will see if it gets anything else. But it's really a terrific film. You should watch it. And Apple Plus has a couple of contenders for best screenplay as well. This one, Cha-Cha Real Smooth, is written, directed, and starring an up-and-coming talent, Cooper Rafe, who plays a man who befriends a woman mainly because he likes older women. But she has an autistic child that actually relates to him, so that makes a friendship between all of them. Cooper's screenplay is really a little odd and weird, but, but real. And I think that's his strong suit. He did this great film festival favorite called Shit House, which I first took notice of his work then. And now I'm opening my eyes even more with this Apple Plus film. Apple Plus also has the greatest beer run ever, which just debuted just in time for me to add to this show because I'm trying to do movies that came out before September 30th. This movie is such a weird plot that I would think it's absurd, except for the fact it's based upon a true story where a guy from the East Coast decides all his friends enlist in the war and he wants to do something as well. He doesn't want to go in the war. So he decides to, yes, deliver them beer. They could buy beer there, but it's more the camaraderie. And the journey he takes opens his eyes to so many things. Zac Efron, I don't think has ever been better as an actor and he's fully clothed. So this time I was able to pay attention to his acting and not just his hot body. What a terrific film and what a surprise. I really think it's a good chance to be up for best screenplay and <laughs> rightfully so. Check it out on Apple Plus. Well, that's my show of the week. Let me know what Oscar contenders you really want to see. Maybe they haven't come out yet. And don't forget to share, subscribe, and tell those who subscribe to share. I'm leaving with a scene from Brothers, which just came out at theater, so didn't qualify to be on this show, but I'm sneaking it in. It's the first mainstream, big budget, big studio gay film, and it needs our help. Us gay people and our straight friends. It didn't do well at the box office. It's gotten great reviews. It is very funny, very funny. It should be seen by so many people, but it's just trickling. Even Chris Evans went on social media to post how great this movie is. <laughs> He's Captain America. All he needs to do is say, I'm in Captain America, and people will flock to his films. Please, the only way to get more mainstream available gay movies out there is to support the ones that are. If you're gay and you think it seems too trite, go anyway, because any genre, if it doesn't do well, it gets cut off. If musicals do poorly, they're done. Westerns are done. It would take miracles for to bring that type of movie back. So let's not let this the beautiful, lovely rom-com slip through our fingers. Please, please go to bros. 
Take your hoes, go to bros. Take your bros, go to bros. And on Oscar level, by the way, there's a really fun song that I think should qualify for best song. And maybe that will be the bros nomination. And that would be very nice. I really think this is terrific. Let's support it. Come on, people. Support Love bros. is not. Yes. Love is not. Love is not.